everybody it's Albert and uh, this will be another of my never-ending battle with 10th rate scholarship um, this is the response at two and I may be pronouncing this wrong Islami one I, I it's I S L A M M E one the number one I apologize if I mispronounce that and he did a video Christianity destroy the lost gospel well you know with a title like that you gotta go take a look right well what it turns out to be is the on the Gospel of Barnabas. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, now there were a number of things written pseudepigraphically under the name Barnabas. There was a, uh, of course, the Epistle of Barnabas, which is much, which is very well known. There's an, an Acts of Barnabas. There's also there also was an earlier Gospel of Barnabas, sometime around the fourth century. That doesn't even exist. No one even knows what was in it. It was just briefly mentioned in one or two places but no one's actually seen it, so we can't say what was in it. Uh, then there's the Gospel of Barnabas that, came, that showed up sometime in the late medieval period. Um, and this one was basically, and I wouldn't even say it was necessarily written by a very knowledgeable Muslim, but it was obviously written by, to me, what was probably a recent convert to Islam from Christianity. Um, because he seemed to be more, he seemed to have a sort of half-rate knowledge of Christianity and a third, and a third-rate, a second-rate knowledge of Christianity and a third-rate or fourth-rate knowledge of Islam. Um, but be that as it may, I mean, it, it's sort of a source of endless amusement. Um, in fact, um, what's happened is there's numerous anachronisms. It becomes almost like a sport to like pick them out. You know, things like, and, and, and geographical errors, like things like saying Nazareth was uh, a fishing village on the Sea of Galilee. In fact, it was inland, the fishing village that's mentioned in, th that throughout is Capernaum, not Gal not Nazareth, but, yeah. But there's other things in there that are really kind of oddball, like it mentions coins, but the coins it mentions are ones that were um, used in more Spain. Um, it, the translations it has of the um, Old Testament are not, obviously not in a form that would have been from the either the Hebrew nor the Greek Septuagint, which would have been what would have been available at the time, but rather from the Latin Vulgate, uh, which you know immediately brings something to, makes you wonder. Hmm? Um, the it it says there's uh, there's numerous other things in here where they where the, the information is something that comes at a much later date than certain things it uses. At, and obviously the person had no idea how this, what Greek or Hebrew titles meant because, which is something of course the real Barnabas would have known very well being a Greek speaking Jew, but um, for example it constantly refers to him as Jesus Christ, but uh, did not, it also numerous times has him denying he's the Messiah. Well. The two terms mean the same thing. Uh, the anointed, the chosen or anointed. So this is um, obviously who ever wrote this didn't know Greek or Hebrew or what the titles meant because they're the same title. Uh, and there's just stuff like this all over. Um, various geographical errors, anachronisms that point like they start talking. At one point there's a battle and there's and, and they're sort of they're obeying the rules of chivalry, which would have been common in in the medieval period, and it just on and on. It's 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 and I'll put a link so you can just check out some of the stuff about the the specific anachronisms with the year of jubilees and things like that, where they basically they they, they refer to the, how it was in the 14th century, and the odds are this thing was written in the 14th century, but you know. If someone's going to, I don't really care that this fellow, you know, I, I don't really usually attack anyone else's religion, and I'm not going to do that here. This is nothing, and I want to be very clear about this. Um, educated Muslims, Muslim scholars will all agree this thing is, in fact, there's encyclopedias of Islam where this is mentioned as a medieval forgery. So this is not really a Christian Islamic argument. But of course, just as there are crackpot Christians, there are crackpot Muslims who will buy anything without ever checking anything and you know if you're going to come out with a video this is Christianity destroyed I really expect something uh, you know on a lost gospel I mean I really expect to see some something that the best you're going to come up with is the 
Gospel of Barnabas. And, and not only that, but you're, all, you're, all he's doing here is repeating. The, this Gospel of Barnabas originally, when it was translated, the translators put a preface in it that said, basically, this is a medieval forgery. But later, Muslims took that preface out, used the translation, but put a new preface in, and that's what all this information is coming from. Well, if you're going to do that, and you're not going to check anything, you are in for a poning. So let the poning begin. Well, someone's going to be hurting after this, but I don't think it's going to be the Christians. Well, of course, two of the Gospels, uh, Mark and Luke, Christians never even claim were eyewitnesses, but rather... Um, what was told to them by others. But the uh, more important thing here is that uh, you really have no idea from, and judging by the rest of your video, you really have no clue what you're talking about. If you want to address the question of eyewitnesses, I would, whether what these Gospels were, I suggest you read Richard Balcom's The Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, which actually is real scholarship, unlike the drivel you're handing out in this video, but um, I don't expect you will. Now the ignorance is coming hot and heavy. Um, Barnabas was not one of the twelve. Now, but you know, it just wasn't. Um, he comes later in the Book of Acts. He's one of those who goes out on the missionary trips with Paul. Um, the twelfth person in the in the twelve apostles was a fellow named Judas Iscariot. You've probably heard of him. And after um, the events of the death and resurrection, um, the after the whole that whole the, that whole sequence, um, when the, in the upper room the, the the apostles the remaining apostles chose a replacement from among the followers of Jesus and chose someone named Matthias, not Barnabas. So uh, more ignorance, but it's kind of it's it's going to be getting more. This this is some this is just minor compared to what's going to be coming up. This is where he merely starts repeating the replacement preface that I mentioned earlier in this video. Um, now, it's not this, this person's fault that somebody who was an idiot wrote a preface uh, for the Gospel of Barnabas, you know, trying to make it sound like, yes, this is all true, it's all... That's not his fault. But it is his fault for not checking anything. Because this merely proves that he doesn't care about the truth. He's heard what he wants to hear, and it backs up his view of things. And it doesn't matter, really, if there's no evidence for it. Um, he's just going to merely take this person's word for it without checking anything, even though most of the stuff is pretty much available on the Internet. But, oh, of course, the only ones he's going to do is go to um, Islamic crackpot sites, which will back up his theories. So, uh, I, what can you say? Really? And exactly what is the evidence for this? Does it appear in the many manuscripts we've gotten out of Alexandria in the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries? The excavations, the things like, you know, things we found like P75, does it appear in any of those manuscripts? No, it doesn't. You know why? Because it didn't exist. In fact, we have the writings of people from Alexandria in that period. Men like Clement and Origen and, and Athanasius and others. Do they ever mention the Gospel of Barnabas? No, they don't. Um, you know, now this makes this, the fact that some uh, fool put this in a preface to the Gospel of Barnabas, despite the fact that the original preface said the thing was a medieval forgery, now that, that might satisfy you. Uh, but for those of us who aren't idiots, we would like a little bit more concrete evidence for this Ale canonical and Alexandria theory, but I don't expect we'll be seeing any anytime real soon. <laughs> Now, 
وعنك الإله يكف العداء مقامك يا سيدي صين you ever get the feeling that this is an Islamic version of the Da Vinci Code? Uh, you know, we have the Edicts of the Council of Nicaea. That was one of them. It's not there. There's no. Way. In fact, the Council of Nicaea never dealt with the canon of Scripture at all. Um, what Gospels were, did or did not exist, or whatever, it, it's just never mentioned. There is no mention of this Gospel. None whatsoever. Or, in fact, they never banned any Hebrew Gospel. In fact, you would see... Jerome later mentioning um, Hebrew Gospels. Not this one, of course. No one mentions anything about the contents of this Gospel. And in fact, once he's going to go into the contents, and once you see it, it's so obviously ridiculous um, and written. It, it's so heavy-handed that you can't really take it seriously. But then again, uh, you've got this guy. Um, I will also point out that the same source he's using, the same preface, although he doesn't mention it in this video, um, also claims, and I'm not, I'm not making this up, the same preface also claims that the Vulgate was based on the Gospel of Barnabas. Now, you know, this is, remember, this is this guy's source, okay? Now, exactly what level of stupid do you have to be to think that the Vulgate was based on the Gospel of Barnabas. Considering it's a translation of the Hebrew Old Testament and the New Testament we have, I mean, I mean, how far down, I mean, do you hit rock bottom and then break out the jackhammers? But that's this guy's source for all this um, information. So this is, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, but there are people like this out there, so here you go. يكف العداء وشاهت وجوه الذين اعتدوا وبالسوء والشر مدوا اليد لماذا فداك وآباؤنا Well, it must have been kept really, really safe because from that point onward until it resurfaced some period, some time in, I believe, the period of Moorish Spain, um, it it's never mentioned by anyone, um, <clears throat> including Muslims, by the way. Uh, you'd think that some Muslim scholar would say, hey, wait a minute, Gospel of Barnabas, let's talk about that. No, they don't. You know why? It didn't exist. It just never existed. Um, and it's quite obvious when you read the text, as I've mentioned, that, that it's, it's medieval, late medieval period. Um, but it just didn't exist, and, and you don't see it mentioned by Muslim scholars at all. Not at all. You, in, in fact, what's funny is, of course, when they're saying, oh, well, the, you know, the Council of Nicaea said this and wiped it out. Well, the Council of Nicaea only had control in the Roman Empire. There were Christians outside the Roman Empire. They didn't know about it either. Um, they never talked about it. You didn't see the Church of the East talking about it. it this thing doesn't exist. It just does not, did, did not exist. There's... And the, and the whole Alexander, I mean, everything this guy's been saying so far is just so completely ridiculous. Um, but it's kind of what you expect. Now, at this point, uh, since the next, I'm going to stop here because the next section is going to actually get into what certain things in this um, Gospel of Barnabas. And, and this pretty much will actually, as, I'll, as I do a little analysis, will actually cinch the fact that this is a medieval forgery, probably by a recent convert. Um, but we'll get to that next time. Thank you very much for your time.